أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمد هو ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم تأتي كل نفس تجادل عن نفسها وتوفى كل نفس ما عملت وهم لا يظلمون صدق الله العظيم Recall the day when every soul will come disputing on its own behalf, are going in the defense for itself. But tuwaffa kullo nafsin, and every soul will be paid in full ma amilat, whatsoever it would have done, whatsoever it would have earned, wa hum la yuslamoon, and they will not be wronged. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَسَلًا قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strikes a similitude of a township which was at peace. قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّةً Contended يَعْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا رَغَدًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ And all the requirements the food, etc., used to come to it from all the places, from every place. For kafarat bi anumillah, then it became ungrateful for the blessings of Allah. For azaq Allahu libas al jua wal khaf. So Allah let it taste the garment of hunger and of fear. Bima kanu yasdaun because of what they used to do. Regarding this simile. There are three views of the exegesis. One is that it is common, not a particular city or township mentioned here. The other is that it is the story of the nation of Sabah in Yemen. And the third, which I prefer, is that here actually a similitude is given for Makkah itself. Makkah was at peace, no doubt place of peace. Number two, the fruit from all the sides, from the whole of the world coming to it. And it was so before also, just as it is today. But when Muhammad Wasallam was, when he was appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call the people of Makkah towards Tawheed, to believe in one God, to worship one God, and to believe in the direction, and to take to the right path. And now the people refuse to accept him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their chastisement, chastisement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced a famine over there. And that is actually mentioned over here, because it's the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَنُزِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messenger to any nation, any people, any town, any city, He sent small, you know, chastisements, so that the people should awaken, wake up, so that they now listen with attention to the call of the messenger of Allah, before the final destruction. So that was the case at Makkah also, it is historically established. وَلَقَدْ جَاهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْهُمْ And a messenger had already come to them from among themselves. فَكَزَّبُوا But they refused to accept him. They belied him. فَأَخَذَهُمُ الْعَذَابُ وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ 
So the chastisement took over them, and they were the evil doers. فَقُلُوا مِمَّا رَضَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا So, who mankind you eat from, what, from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you, if it is lawful and clean, حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Whatever is lawful, not forbidden, not haram. طَيِّبًا clean. إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ and you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa shkuru ni'mat Allah in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun. And for this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you these bounties, you should be thankful to Him if you really worship Him. In nama harrama alaykumul maytata wa dama wa lahma al khinzire wa ma'uhilla li ghayri Allah bihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden and declared haram for you four things. Number one, al mayta the meat of the dead animal, Waddama. Number two, blood, Walamal Khinzir, and the flesh of swine, Wamauhilla Ligarillahi Bihi, and the meat of the animal which has been sacrificed for anybody else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Manisturra Gara Bhagin Wala Adin, but whosoever is compelled by necessity. He is dying with hunger, and he has nothing else to eat. For that is permissible for him, but with two conditions, غَيْرَ بَاغِن Not craving for it. وَلَا adin, And not transgressing the minimum limit to keep alive. Not more than that. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ rahim. So if a, a person is, is in such a distress, and he has to use something from these four things which have been declared unlawful, haram, he can take something to save his life. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَزِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ And don't say with your tongues incorrectly that this is halal, permissible, and this is haram, this is forbidden. What does it mean? It's for Allah to decide what is halal, what is haram. What is forbidden? And what is permissible? Not that you should fabricate lies on Allah. You hold an opinion of your own and then say this is from Allah. Those who forge and lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be successful. This world is a little enjoyment. A place to live for some time. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ And then for them will be the very painful chastisement. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا مَا قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ As for those who became Jews, we had declared unlawful, forbidden them from some things, which we have already narrated to you. وَعَوَ ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ And we didn't wrong them. We didn't do anything wrong to them. وَلَاكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَسْلِمُونَ But they had been doing wrong to themselves. سُمَّ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِلَّذِينَ عَمِلُوا السُّوَى بِجَهَانَةٍ Then your Lord is in favor of those who commit something bad, evil, in ignorance, not knowingly. ثُمَّ تَعْبُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ And then they apologize and repent after that. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِهَا لَغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Surely your Lord, after this, that after they have repented, so he is the forgiving and the merciful. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَدِيفًا وَلَمْ يَقُوِلَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Verily, surely, Ibrahim, ala nabiyyina wa alayhi sallatu wa salam, was an ummah, what does it mean? A leader, a model for whole humanity. Amma yawmo means to aim something. And from this is imam. So here this word ummah is used in place of imam. Inni jailuka linnase imama. That was the promise given to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And we have it in the first part of Quran. In the 15th section of Surah Al-Baqarah. Inni jailuka linnase imama. So here this word is used in place of imam. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَادَةً لِلَّهِ 
He was the Imam, the leader, a model for the humanity. Obedient to Allah. Hanifan, upright man of pure faith. Walam yakum al mushrikeen. And he was not from those who assign partners and equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shakiran li anwamihi. He was grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. Ijtibahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected him, chosen him. Wahadahu ila sirat mustaqeem. And had guided, guided him to the right path, straight path. وَآتَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَدَةً And we gave him in this world also good blessings. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And verily, surely, in the hereafter, he will be from among our righteous people. سُمَّ عَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ Then after him, we have revealed to you we have sent down the revelation to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anittame millata Ibrahim Khalifa, that you should follow the creed of Ibrahim, who was upright and of pure faith, wa kana min al-mushrikeen, and he was not one of the associators. Inna ma ju'ila sabtu ala al-lazeen aqtalafu feeh. The sabbat was only appointed for those who differed concerning it. Actually, for them also, Friday was prescribed. This is given in a, in a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. But by due to their mischief, they disliked Friday and they adopted Sabbath, Saturday. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, okay, it is fixed for you now. In the majority of Sabtu, the Saturday was fixed for those people, who had differed regarding it. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَا يَحْكُمُ بَأَيَنَهُمْ يَوْبَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي مَا كَانُوا فِي يَخْتَلِفُونَ And surely your Lord will judge between them on the day of judgment in all the matters in which they were differing. اُدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَعِزَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلٌ بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنَ Now these last four ayat are very profound, very important. Addressing directly Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions, his followers. Ayah 125, again I have to say the same words, very profound. It gives us three levels of da'wah. Calling towards Allah, calling towards the straight path, calling towards the religion of Allah, deen of Allah. This calling has to be on one of the three levels. Number one, level of the intelligentsia, the intellectual minority. You can't impress them by sermons. No. They need arguments. So first of all, highest level of da'wah is with hikmah. Udo ila sabili rabbika. Call towards the path of your Lord with wisdom, with knowledge, with arguments. Because when Quran asks others, hatu burhana kumin kuntum sadiqeen. Bring forth your arguments if you are true. Then others have also the right to demand arguments. So this is the highest level of the intelligentsia, or the intellectual minority. Then come the level of the common people, whose minds are like clean slates. You can write on it. They don't have any philosophies in their mind. They don't know what is Marxism and what is existentialism and what is logical positivism, nothing of the sort. So you can approach their hearts directly. And to approach their hearts directly, good sermon. Mawizatil Hasana. This is the second level. If, if it comes from your heart, it will descend on the heart of the person to whom you are calling. As dil khezat, bar dil rezat. Only you have to be sincere. Whatever you say, you say out of sincerity. Not that you want to, you want to impose yourself upon that person. To show him you are inferior and I am superior. No, no, no. Out of sincerity. And out of humility, you call them towards the deen of Allah. So this good sermon will do in the case of common people. Number third level, majadil hum billati asan. There are some people who are paid for taking people astray. The missionaries of the Christians, they are paid for it. The mubalareen of Tadiyanis, they are paid for it. 
the mubalirin of Baha'is, they are paid for it. They are not going to listen to any sermon, nor are they ready to, le to listen to any arguments. There you have to fight with them, quarrel with them, argue with them. This is called mujadala, from jadl. Jadl means fighting, but verbal fighting, munazara, munazara, mubahala, as this word came in Surat al Imran. So this level also, third level, you have to argue with them and defeat them in their arguments. But here also, your attitude should be very good, not bad. You shouldn't call names. You shouldn't glow, go low. You should be, you should retain a level, a moral level. Even if you have, you have to argue against them, but it should be in a very, very good way, beautiful way. Inna Rabba kahu alamu bi mangol an sabilehi. Surely your Lord very well knows who has gone astray from his path. Wa hu alamu bil muftadin. And he knows very well those who are rightly guided. Fain aqab tum. But if you have to take revenge, now if your opponents are calling names to you, they are persecuting you, doing some harm to you, and now if you decide that you have to take revenge, in aqab tum fa aqabu bi mislima uqib tum bihi. Then punish them only with the like of that with, their, with which they were afflicted. As you were afflicted this much. So that much only can you afflict them. Not more than that. So you have to be equal. Whatever harm they did to you, you can take the revenge to that extent. But not more. Fine. Aqabtum fa'aqibu bismahu kibtum bihi. Wala in sabartum na huwa khairul sabreen. But if you endure patiently, don't take revenge. Because you know this is a Makki Surah. During the Makki period, this was the order of the day for all the twelve long years. That, O oh Muslims, no retaliation from your side. Take all the persecution patiently, whether it is verbal persecution or it is physical persecution. But you are not related. To retaliate, no retaliation whatsoever. So that is also given here. Well, in sabartum, if you take it patiently, pocket it, and don't take revenge. Now, khairul It is much better than for those who persevere and who endure patiently. Wasmir wama sabrokaillah billah, and endure you also, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wasmir wama sabrokaillah billah. And your patience is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to His support because you have put your trust in Him. Wala tahzan alayhim. And don't grieve on them because now they are doomed. Now that you have taken about 12 years in calling them to the right path, to tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have rejected you. So Allah's Chastisement will come to them. But then you should not grieve over it because they, they are your kith and kin. They are your own tribe. You belong to Quraysh. You are a Tarshi. They are your kith and kin and your relatives. But don't grieve on them. Wala takofi zaqin mimma yum kurun. And also, don't be straightened in your hearts and chest due to what they are conspiring. They are conspiring against you. They are plotting against you. They are having mutual consultations that we should kill Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We should murder him. All these things they are doing, but you don't think that they can do anything. So, whatever plotting they are doing, whatever conspiration, conspiracies they are hatching, they will do no harm to you. Don't be very fearful of these things. Inna Allah ma'allazina attaqo. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those people who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The due regard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallazina hum muhsinun. And who are excellent in worship and service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is with you. So you have, you need not worry. Let them conspire. 
Let them plot. Let them make schemes. Don't worry, because Allah is with you. And this was the word that the Prophet said to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله تعالى عنه, when they were both hiding in that cave of Saur, and people had just reached, you know, at the mouth of that cave. And Abu Bakr said رضي الله تعالى عنه, only if they cast their eyes towards their own feet, they will see us. What was the answer? لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Don't grieve. Allah is verily allies with us. So this is it. In the Allah ma'al ladhina taqaw wa ladhina hum ursinu. Let them conspire, let them plot, whatever they want, what intrigues they want to do. You don't worry. We are with you. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Subhan al-lazhi yasra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-lazhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. إنه هو السميع العليم صدق الله العظيم إنه هو السميع البصير سوري سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده glorified is he who took his bondsman his servant محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم by night من المسجد الحرام from the sacred mosque that is of مكة إلى المسجد الأقصى to the remote mosque that is what what which was in Jerusalem الذي باركنا حوله whose environment and neighborhood we have blessed لنريه من آياتنا so that we show to him to محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم our signs إذا هو السميع البصير verily he is all listening all seeing. وَآتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلْنَا هُدَلْ لِبَنِ إِسْرَائِيلِ And we gave Moses, عليه الصلاة والسلام, الكتاب, Torah, the book. وَجَعَلْنَا هُدَلْ لِبَنِ إِسْرَائِيلِ And we declared it, made it, a guidance for the children of Israel. Now note the difference. Torah was guidance for Bani Israel only, not for the whole of humanity. While Quran is hudal lil nas, wa bayyinati min al huda wal furqan. Shahru Ramadan al lazi unzila fihi al Quran, hudal lil nas, wa bayyinati min al huda wal furqan. It is the guidance for all mankind, for whole human race. Wa atayna Musa al kitab wa jalna hudal lil bani Israel. Allah ta taqizu min duni wa kila. The essence of the teaching of Torah was. Don't take anybody, guardian, by my side, alongside me. You should trust me. You should put all the trust in me, not trusting anybody else, not relying on anybody else, not hoping help from anybody else. Allah tattakhidu min duni wakila. Take not any guardian beside me. ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَنُوهُ You are the progeny of those people who we had carried in that, you know, this the ark, yes. With Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شُكُورًا Verily, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam was our bondsman, our servant, and a very grateful servant. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُسْتَدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ بَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَرْوِيرًا And we had decided and declared for the children of Israel in the book, you will certainly do mischief in the earth twice, and you will certainly rise to the height of insolence and arrogance and tyranny. Now, please let me give you a view, a review, let me say it, of the history. Because here, in this first section of Surah Bani Israel, the history of Bani Israel is being referred to. The history of the former Muslim Ummah starts from the year nearly 1400 B.C. when Torah was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But their rise to power and glory that was about 
400 years later. Not the case with us. Our Khilafat Rashta, the pious caliphate, was just adjacent to the period of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there was three or four centuries gap between Moses and their glorious time. The glorious time was the reign of Talut alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, and Sulaiman alayhi salam. Three kings, about 100 years, 1000 BC to 900 BC. After Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, the kingdom broke into two. The northern kingdom of Israel, the capital was Samaria. And southern kingdom of Judea, Judea, Yehuda, and its capital was Jerusalem. But then there was the downfall. These people just threw the book and Sharia of Allah on their backs, turned away from the Sharia. They were loving this world and its luxuries, etc., etc. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them the chastisement, the punishment in this world. First of all, the northern kingdom, Israel, was destroyed by Assyrians in the year 731 before Christ. And then after that day, you know, Israel came into existence in 1948, in this century. Between these two, there was there never has been any Israel. Israel was the northern kingdom, which was destroyed in the year 731 before Christ. And then, you know, Judy, Yehuda, that was also destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in the year 587 before Christ. Hundreds and thousands of people were massacred. Hundreds and thousands of people were taken as captives to Babylonia. Not a single soul remained in Jerusalem. Not two bricks remained intact. The temple, we should call it mosque. They call it temple. Solomon's temple, temple of Solomon, it was the mosque. Built by Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam. But it was raised to the ground by Nebuchadnezzar. Demolished. But then, after some time, this kingdom of Babylonia was destroyed by Cyrus, the king of Persia. Kehoros or Cyrus and Zulkarnain, who is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf in, 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 in the Quran. And we shall read it, inshallah, tomorrow. So when he destroyed Babylonia, he then allowed Jews to go back. But they didn't come and block, only trickle down, coming some people coming, others stayed back there. And then Darius, who was the next king after Cyrus, then he helped them to go back. And they came with Hazrat Uzair in the year 458 BC. Now the, another period started for them. And that was the period of second glory. A Maccabi empire was established. Because due to the reformationary work which was done by Hazrat Uzair alayhi salatu was salam, the new people again apologized to Allah, repented to Allah, they rectified their manners, they started practicing the Sharia. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again gave them a chance. Again there was a rise. Again they had a, you know, power and glory in this world. And that was the Maccabi kingdom which as far as the area is concerned, it was greater than the kingdom of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. But then, again there was a downfall. Again they forgot about the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again they were after the worldly gains and the earthly pleasures and lusts. So again, you know, then they were punished at the hands of the, first at the hands of the Greek. Alexander and Seleucus, then at the hands of the Romans, and they were under the Romans actually, although the Romans had put a king, local king here in Judea, and he was Herod the Great. 
but actually the governing force was and the garrison, the Roman garrison was there. This is the history. Two rises, two falls. One rise to glory, during, uh, that is the pinnacle was, the days of Talut, Dawood, and Sulaiman, alayhi salatu Then the downfall and this lower crest was, number one, destruction of Israel at the hands of Assyrians, 731 B.C. And then the destruction of Judy at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar and demolition of the first temple, 587 B.C. Then there was a revival in them, a revival, a renaissance. And then they had a Maccabi power again. They rose to height and power. But again, second downfall. And that downfall, you know, the lowest ebb was when in the year 70, Titus, a Roman general, massacred 100,000, 133,000 Jews in one day in Jerusalem. And then another 63,000 taken as captives, slaves. And the Jews were ordered to go away from Palestine. Their period of diaspora started. Some went to Europe, others to Asia, others to Africa, diaspora. Diaspora started from the year 70 AD. And it ended in the year 1917, after the Balfour Declaration, when the British, under the British mandate, Balfour declared, he was the foreign secretary of British Empire, that Jews can come back to Palestine and they can settle there. So this period from 70 A.D. to 1917, it was their diaspora. And then in 1948, their state of Israel was established. In 1967, they, you know, increased their area by capturing the Sinai Peninsula from the Egyptians, the Golan Heights from the Syrians, and the West Bank, whole of it, from Jordan. And this is the dispute which is going on now. We don't know what form it will take, but it can flare up at any time into a very big war, very big war, very big war. And Surat al Kahf starts with a prophecy that a very big war will come. But that we shall read tomorrow. Now come to the text. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُسْتِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُبٌ كَوِيرًا And we had forewarned the children of Israel that you will certainly make mischief, great mischief in the earth twice. And you will certainly rise to the height of arrogance and tyranny. فَإِذَا جَعْوَادُ أُولَاهُمَا So when the promise of the first of the two came to pass, Basna alaykum ibad lana uli basin shadeed. We sent over you, our bondsmen, who were very tough in fighting. Fajasu khayalat dayar. They permeated all of your lands and ravaged. Wakana wada wada mafula. And our promise had to come to, to be true. The promise was done. You were punished. These were the at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. I told you, if I am not, you know, making an error, 600,000 were massacred. 600,000 were taken captive to Babylonia. Not a single soul remained in Jerusalem. And not even two bricks were intact. And the temple the mosque built by Suleiman was raised to the ground. Then we gave back your turn over them. This is the Makkabi, their renaissance. They again rose to height. And we help you with sons and wealth. And we made you very numerous in numbers. In Ahsantum, Ahsantum li anfusikum. If you did something good, you did it for yourself. Wa in Asatum, Fala. If you have done something bad, evil, well, it is against you. 
یو ول ہیو ٹو سفر فائزا جا واد الآخرت وین دی ٹائم آف دی سیکنڈ پرومس کیم ٹو پاس دس از ایئر سیونٹی آفٹر کرائسٹ سیونٹی اے ڈی ناٹ بی سی ناؤ آفٹر کرائسٹ بیکاز کرائسٹ واز ریز ٹو دی ہیون ان دی ایئر تھرٹی ٹو اے ڈی بیکاز کرائسٹ واز بورن ان ون بی سی یو نو دس فیلسی یو مسٹ بی نوئنگ دیٹ یو نو دی کیلنڈر دی کرسچن کیلنڈر اٹس ایز اے مسٹیک بیکاز کرائسٹ واز بورن اکارڈنگ ٹو دیئر ٹریڈیشن آن دی ٹوینٹی ففتھ آف ڈسمبر اینڈ دے اسٹارٹیڈ ون ایئر فرام فرسٹ جنوری آف وچ کیم وچ فالوڈ اٹ سو ایکچولی کرائسٹ واز بورن ون ایئر بفور کرائسٹ بیکاز دی ایرا کرسچن ایرا از اسٹارٹنگ فرام دی فرسٹ جنوری سکس ڈیز آفٹر دی برتھ آف حضرت مسیح علیہ السلام و السلام اینی ہاؤ تھرٹی ٹو بیکاز ہی واز ایج ایڈ ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم تھرٹی تھری دیٹ واز دی ایج آف کرائسٹ علیہ السلاۃ والسلام اینی واز دین سو دی ہیونس فیضا جا واد الآخرت علیہ یسو وجوہ کو اگین وی سینٹ اوور یو ہورڈس آرمیز سو دیٹ دے شوڈ دے مے ڈس گریس یور فیسز بھلے یت خل المسجد کما دخل ہوا بولا برا And they may enter the mosque, masjid. Quran is saying masjid, temple. The second temple which was built during the Maccabi power. This was the second temple, which is now lying raised to the ground. Except only a wall, the wailing wall, the western wall of the second temple is intact. And the Jews go there and mourn and weep, just like, you know, Shias. As they, you know, do mourning, they also do this, this, this same type of mourning in the wall, wailing wall. They call it the wailing wall, where they go and weep and mourn. So they enter the mosque again as they had entered during the first time. And so that they should destroy on everything, destroy everything that they, they laid their hands upon, destroy everything that they conquered. Asa Rabbukum and Yarhamakum. Your Lord is still ready to have mercy upon you. These people, Bani Israel, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice says in Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya Bani Israel, askurhu ni'mati yallati yanamtu alaykum wa adni fawwaltukum ala al-alameen. I raised you higher than all the nations of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had been very, very, very kind to them. Very kind to them. No doubt. So here again, after all their mischiefs and the misdoings, what they had been doing, they tried to crucify a messenger of Allah, Jesus, alayhi salatu wa salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not at, as yet destroyed them. Their chastisement, Adab al-Akbar, has not come to them, which came to the people of Nuh, which came to the nation of Hud, which came to the nation of Saleh. This is yet to come, and it will come, and it is not very far off. But up till this time, Asa Rabbukum Ayyarhamakum, it is being said when, when Quran was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 1400 years ago, your Lord is ready to have mercy upon you even now. Wain Uddum Uddna. But if you repeat, you do the same which you have been doing before, we shall do again the same which we have been doing before. We shall punish you again. وَجَعَلْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ حَسِيرًا And we have made hell, the prison for the disbelievers. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرَانَ يَحْدِي لِلَّتِيهَا أَقْوَمْ This Quran is now guiding humanity to the path which is the straightest, most straight, أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشَّنُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And gives glad tidings to the believers, الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Who do good deeds also. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا That for them there is a very big reward. وَأَنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ As for those who don't believe in resurrection and the hereafter, آتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابًا عَلِيمًا We have prepared for them a very painful chastisement. وَيَدُوا الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِ دُعَاهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا And man, when he is praying for something good, He prays for something which is harmful for him because he is very hasty. 
defined in Surah Al-Baqarah. Asaan tuhimmu shayin wa huwa sharnun lakum. Wa asaan takrahu shayin wa huwa khairun lakum. It's just possible, O oh people, that you might like something, but in reality it is harmful for you. It's just possible that you might hate something, dislike something, but in reality it might be beneficial for you. So when man prays for him, he thinks according to his thought, he is asking for something good. But actually what he is asking is not good for him. It is harmful for him. وَيَدُوا الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرْدُ دَعَاهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا Due to this hastiness and short-sightedness, we can't see, you know, uh, beyond certain things. So immediate effect, whether it's pleasure or it's pain, immediate pain, immediate pleasure, we are influenced by it. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَةً And we have made the light of the day two signs. For Mahauna Ayat al we have darkened the sign of night. Vajalna Ayat al Nahari Mubsalatan. And we have made the sign of day bright, through which you can see. The Tabtahu Fadlam in Rabbikum. So that you seek the bounty from your Lord. You earn your livelihood in the day. Walatala Muwada the Sinina Wal Hisab. Or so that you know the counting of the years and the reckoning of time. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا And everything we have explained and expounded in full detail. وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَنزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي أُرُقِهِ And to every man we have tied his deeds, the balance sheet of his deeds to his neck. وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And we take it out on the day of judgment. يَلْقَاهُ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا It will be a book. And he will find it, that it is spread wide, open. Ipra kitabak. It will be said, now you yourself read your book, the record of your deeds, misdeeds or good deeds. Tafa bin nafsikal yawm alayka hasiba. You are yourself sufficient for reckoning. And you see what good deeds you have done and what bad crimes you have committed. You can yourself decide what should be your fate. مَنِ اِحْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَحْتَدِي لِلنَّفْسِ Whosoever takes to the right path, well, he takes to the right path for his own benefit. وَمَنْ ظَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا And whosoever goes astray, well, he goes astray against himself. You know, he will be the loser on the day of judgment and the life hereafter. وَلَا تَذِرُ وَعَذِرَةٌ مِذْرَ أُخْرَى And no soul will be able to to take the burden of other souls. Every soul, every human being will have to carry his own burden of deeds, maybe of sins. Nobody will be able to come to your help that you are overburdened. Let me share with you. No. And we have not been sending the chastisement, final chastisement, Except when we had sent the messenger. This is very important, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never destroyed a nation without first sending a messenger to them. So that the messenger should warn them, call them to the right path. So that they can't say that we didn't know. The message was not, not conveyed to us. No. But this is done, everything done. And then they reject the messenger. They don't accept him. Then the nations are war. Because now I am using this word. Why? Because now no Rasul is to come. No messenger after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that type of punishment, annihilation, you know, as if the, the nation never existed. As if they were not there. So this chastisement, chastisement only came after a messenger. وَإِذَا عَرَنَّا نُحْلِقَ قَرِيَةً And when we decide that some town is going to be destroyed, أَبَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا Then we allow the affluent people of that township فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا And they transgress in that town. They break all the limits of Sharia and decency. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ 
And so the word is justified against them. And then, فَدَمَّرْنَاهَا تَدْبِيرًا And then we annihilate them with complete annihilation. وَكَمْ أَحْلَقْنَا مِنَ الْقُرُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ نُوحِ And so many nations and so many races we destroyed after the nation of Nuh, alayhi salatu wa salam. وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا And your Lord is sufficient to be aware of the sins of His bondsmen. He knows what has earned what sins. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ These ayat are very important, very decisive. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ Whosoever amongst you he loves ajilah, ajilah, which is near, immediate, this life, this is ajilah. Dunya and ajilah is one. Akhira, akhira is the hereafter. Ajilah and opposed to ajilah, akhira. Dunya and opposed to dunya, akhira. For akhira, one word, akhira. But for dunya, we have dunya as well as ajilah. Man kana yuridu ajilata. Whosoever desires this hasty world, أَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ We give them in this world hastily whatsoever we decree to whomsoever we wish. Not that all that you want can, will be given to you, but we will give you something if you are working hard for this world to gain the wealth of this, this world. Well, okay, we shall give, reward you. Some of your, you know, hard labor will be repaid. Summa jalna lahu jahannam. And then after that, we shall appoint for them the hell. Yaslaha mazmuba madhura. And he will enter it, despised and rejected. Wa man harada la akhirata. And whosoever aims at akhira, likes akhira, desires the hereafter. وَسَعَلَهَا سَعِيَهَا And he has tried for it as one should strive for Akhira. How precious is this Akhira? You have to work hard for that. This world, temporary abode, and you are working so hard for it. So now imagine how much harder you should work for that eternal life. سَعَلَهَا سَعِيَهَا وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَلَهَا سَعِيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنُونَ and he is a believer. They are the people. Their striving shall be appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rewarded. As for this world, all we are sustaining all. These also, those also. People who desire this world, they also. And people who desire the next world, they also. We give them the sustenance in this world. And this is from the bestowment of your Lord. And the bestowment of your Lord cannot be stopped. In this world also, just look how we have made some people excel others. Some have more wealth, some have less. Some are, some have better health, some have weaker, you, you know, uh, physique, and so on and so forth. So there is tafsil. Here also in this world, some excel others. But the hereafter, it is much greater in ranks, and much greater in excellence. La taj'al ma'allahi ilahan akhara. Don't set set up with Allah any other God. فَتَقُدَ مَزْمُومًا مَخْزُولًا Then you will have to sit despised and forsaken. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And your Lord has decreed, decided, that you should not worship anybody except Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And be kind to your parents. Now these ayat, we shall not be able to finish them, complete them. But they are actually the Quranic version of the Ten Commandments of Torah. 
دس از اے حدیث آف حضرت عبداللہ ابن عباس رضی اللہ تعالی عنہما دا دیز آیات 18 آیات اور دیز سیکشن سیکشن 3 اینڈ 4 اف سورت بسورت بنی اسرائیل دے آر دی قرانک ورژن اف دی 10 کمانڈمنٹس اف تورا کمانڈمنٹ نمبر 1 لقضا ربک اللہ تعبد الا ایا یور لارڈ ہیز ڈیکریڈ اینڈ ڈیسائیڈڈ ونس فار آل ڈونٹ ورشپ اینی بڈی ایلس ایکسپٹ اللہ نمبر 2 ابل والدین احسانا بی جنٹل اینڈ ریسپیکٹ فل اینڈ کائنڈ ٹو یور پیرنٹس اما یبلغن عندک الکبر احد و کلاہما if one of them one of your parents father or mother or both of them reach the age of old age then don't even say any disrespectful word to them wala taqul lahuma uffin not saying any disrespectful word wala tanharhuma don't shout at them wa qul lahuma qawlan karima and you should say to them talk to them in a very respectful manner وَقْفِرْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ ذُلَّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower down your arms and shoulders before them. Out of mercy. وَقُرْ And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمُهُمَا كَمَا رَبِّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Oh my Lord, have mercy upon them. My parents, my father and mother. Just as they brought me up when I was a very small infant. I was dependent upon them. They brought me up. I cannot reward, give them the reward of, you know, the good that they did to me. Only I can pray to you. You please reward them. وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمُهُمَا كَمَا رَبِّ عَنِ الصَّغِيرَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ Your Lord very well knows what is in your hearts. اِن تَكُونُوا صَالِحِينَ If you are pious and good intentioned, فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لِلَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving for those who turn to him. وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ And give to your relatives, kith and kin, their right. It's a right on you to support them, help them if they are needy. وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ And the needy, وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ And the wayfarer, traveler, وَلَا تُبَزِّ تَرْزِيرًا And don't squander away your wealth in squandering. In al mubazzirina kanu ikhwarish shayateen. These squanderers of their money, they are the brothers of satans. Wa kana shaytanu li rabbihi kafura. And verily, the satan was very ungrateful to his lord. Wa inna tawridanna anhum ibtigha rahmatin min rabbika tarjuha faqul lahum qalam maysura. And you, if you have to turn away from them while they are asking for some help, and you can't offer any help because you are yourself waiting for the mercy of Allah, that Allah may give you, you are also in need at that time. You can't help them. But then you must say to them gentle words. Don't say some harsh words to them. Apologize. Brother, at this time, it's impossible for me to help you. That way. Not that you... You are harsh to them. وَإِمَّا تَوْرِذَنَّ عَنْهُمْ تُغَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تَرْجُوهَا فَقُلْ لَهُمْ قَوْلُمْ مَيْسُورًا وَلَا تَجَعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَا عُرُوبِكَ And don't make your hand change to your neck. This is actually, this denotes miserliness. Your hand is tied here. It cannot give anything to anybody. So this is the miserliness. وَلَا تَجَعْلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَا عُرُوبِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْحَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطُ And in the same way, don't outspread it totally. Open. You are spending and spending and spending and not seeing to your own needs. So that is also an extreme phenomenon which is not required. وَلَا تَجَرْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُوقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْحَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا Maybe if you continue in that way, then you will have to sit down, reproached, and maybe severe in severe poverty. Inna rabbaka yapsutu rizqa liman yasha wa yaktir. Verily, your Lord, He widens the risk and the provisions for whomsoever He likes. 
among his sportsmen, and he straightens them also, less, to some more, to some less. And this is the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna hu kana bi ibadahi khabiram basira. He, with his bondsmen, his servants, he is all knowing, all seeing, and aware of everything. Wala taqtulu awladakum khashyat aimlaak. And don't kill or murder your offsprings for fear of poverty. Nahnu narzukuhum wa iyaakum. We shall feed them and also you. We are feeding you. Don't think you are feeding yourself. We are providing for you. We shall provide for you and for them also. Inna qatlahum kana khitan kabira. Surely, killing the offspring was a very great sin. Wala taqrabu zina. And don't approach adultery. Inna hu kana fahishatan wa saha sabila. This adultery is definitely a big indecency and an evil way. وَلَا تَقْتُلُ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And don't kill the human life which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared to be respectful except with law. When law requires, when somebody has killed someone, well, in punishment he can be, his life can be taken and so on and so forth. وَمَنْ قُتِلَ مَزْلُومًا And whosoever is killed without any fault of his, فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيِّهِ So we have given the authority to his heir that he can kill the killer. فَلَا يُسْرِفِ الْقَتْلِ But in taking that revenge and kasas, he should not exceed the limits. إِنَّهُ كَانَ مَنْسُورًا He will be helped. This society will help that person whose father or brother has been killed by somebody. To take the revenge from the person who has killed. In Nahu Kana Mansura, it's the duty of the society and the state to help get hold of that person killer. And then you know put him at the mercy of the heirs of the of the person who was killed. If they like, they can pardon him. If they like, they can receive some money, blood money, and and save and spare his life. And if they think that no. Will we need life for life? Then, if the authority is in their hands, wala takrabu mal al yatim illa bil nati hasan, and don't go near the wealth of an orphan, but in the best way. Hatta yab loga shudda till such time that he attains maturity. Wa afu bil ahd, and fulfill your covenants, and you know, in al ahda kana masul masula the covenants. And contracts, they will be questioned about. Waafu al-kaila is akil tum, and fill up the mayor when you are mayoring for others. Wazanu bil kistas al mustaqim, and when you have to weigh something, weigh with a straight balance. Zale ka khairu wasan taawila. This is fair and better in the consequence, in the end. Walatakum ala sala ka bihi ilm, and don't pursue. For which you have no knowledge. This ayah is very important, but now the time is finished. I will explain this ayah to some length tomorrow, inshallah. But here only we are translating. Don't pursue that thing for which you have no knowledge. Verily, these faculties of samat that you can listen, and basara that you can see, and fuad again, let me say, the faculty of inferring, which is inherent here. In this computer, which is placed in your skull, kullo ulai ka kana no masula. Everybody will be held responsible for these things. We gave you all these faculties, and you just didn't use them, and you were after such things which have no basis in knowledge. Wala tam shafil arde maraha, and don't walk on the land on earth haughtily. Inna ka lam takhre ka lamb. You cannot. You will not be able to tear apart our land. Balantam logal jibal atula, and you will not be able to reach the height of the mountains. Howsoever you know, you straighten your neck, but you can't reach the height of the mountains. Kullo zale ka kana sayye ho in darab de ka makruha. All of that, the evil thereof is hateful in the sight of your Lord. Zale ka bimma ukhailay karabu ka bin al hikma. 
This is that which your Lord has revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mean from hikmah. This is the wisdom. This is the basis of a, of a just society, of a healthy society. This is the basis of a social order. This is what your Lord has revealed to you from hikmah, from the wisdom. And don't appoint another God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you will be cast into the hell, reproved and blameworthy. Last ayah, Has your Lord Allah favored you with sons? And He has taken for Himself the angels as daughters. It's a very awful saying that you are saying. It's something which is very awful. Refrain from it. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.